Wild Dixie here. Today I want to talk to you about some of the most dangerous animals you can encounter on trail and that is livestock and dogs. I absolutely love critters and that goes for buffaloes, cows, sheep, goats, dogs, any of the things that you can encounter while you're out backpacking. But I do feel like it's worth mentioning that navigating some of these encounters can be interesting. I've said before, when you're backpacking, your chance of being attacked by any animal is extremely small. I've made videos on the scary predators like bears and mountain lions, but what makes livestock so dangerous is you'll encounter them much more often and people don't tend to treat them as threats even though they are capable of killing people and have killed people. Look lady, I done faced a mountain lion today. I am not afraid of you. Oh. And I mentioned that you might see these animals while you're backpacking, but you're most likely to see them on the long distance hiking trails like the Appalachian Trail, the Pacific Crest Trail, the Continental Divide Trail, the Pinhoti Trail, the Florida Trail, where you're gonna be going through places here in the US like ranches, neighborhoods, and then maybe even just doing some treks over in the UK, which I'm hoping to get more experience with later this year. On my through hikes, I've never had any negative encounters with livestock. Most of the time they've been at most a little bit curious as to what I'm doing or I don't see one and you know it scares me when I round the corner. Uh, but most of the time they're kind of timid and they'll run away. They don't really want any part of me or what I'm doing. Scaredy cat. But that is not always the case. In Colorado last year, apparently there was somebody who was out trail running on the Colorado Trail and she ended up being trampled by cows. They basically attacked her and stomped on her and thankfully she did not die from her injuries, but she was hospitalized. And there are numerous stories of people being attacked by bison here in the national parks in the U.S., like Yellowstone, for example. That's really more of a wild experience, but you can apply a lot of what I've said about livestock to wild herbivores like bison and moose too. So what can you do to minimize your risk of being injured or killed by livestock while you're out backpacking? First, I would make noise from a distance, you know, as you first spot them, if they're far away, just kind of make some noise so that they know that you're there. You certainly don't want to startle them and like start a stampede or something. I actually had this happen with some sheep while I was through hiking the Continental Divide Trail. So the farther you are, if you were to spook them and that was to happen, you'd be much safer than if you're right up on them and then you spook them and they stampede and trample you. Next, I feel like this one should be common sense, but don't try to pet them. <laughs> the reason I'm kind of laughing about this one is that's probably how I'm going to go out someday is petting something I shouldn't because it is tempting. You know, you're out there, you're having this experience, but for your safety, it's best to just not mess with them. Also, you want to give them as much space as possible when you're walking through the area that they live in, especially if you see calves because all mothers in nature tend to be more aggressive when they have young that they're trying to protect. If you notice that the cows or other livestock are getting a little bit curious about you and they're coming towards you, you can raise your arms, hold up your trekking poles, try to appear big and intimidating so hopefully that kind of shoes them off and you don't end up in a sticky situation. With that said, if a livestock animal puts its head down and it starts charging at you, I don't think the right move is to stand your ground like you would with a bear, you need to get out of there because they're not playing. So take off. And from what I've read, it's best while you're running to make sharp 90 degree turns either to the left or the right because when that animal has to shift its body to go that direction to follow you, it's going to slow it down much more than it will you and so hopefully that'll help you out a little bit. It also never hurts to have trekking poles or some sort of walking stick to hold up as a deterrent. I worked with cows when I was in college and just having something like that, if somebody was 
having a little attitude, you know, just holding something like that up would make them go like, okay, maybe I don't want to mess with you. But worst case scenario, if you're truly in danger, if you've got some bear spray or pepper spray, you can always deploy that. My only scary experience with livestock actually wasn't specifically with the livestock, it was with the guard dogs that were trained to look after the livestock. Livestock guardian dogs are used a lot along the Continental Divide Trail and you're constantly walking through different farms and ranches, so it's pretty common to come across them out there. From what I've read, apparently the ranchers are supposed to keep their livestock at least a quarter mile from the Continental Divide Trail or Colorado Trail and they've got contracts that they've agreed to um, to do that and if they go against that apparently the Forest Service can null and void their contract for grazing uh, but with that said things happen you can you know try to control wildlife so much but they don't understand our boundaries um, you might step off the trail to use the restroom and find yourself near a herd that you didn't expect to be there so you just never know what little things can happen if you find yourself in contact with a guard dog for livestock don't try to be intimidating because the last thing you want to do is make this dog think that you are actually the threat that it thinks you might be so throwing rocks and you know waving at it with a stick and things like that probably aren't the best go-to Instead, you want to stay calm. Try not to make direct eye contact with the dog, but you know, keep yourself pointed towards it and then slowly back up and give it space. And if that even means backtracking down the trail and waiting a while till things are cleared out, then that might be what you have to do. Thankfully, the situation I was in was de-escalated by somebody who was working with the livestock that day and they happened to call the dog off. So I was very thankful for that. But guardian dogs aren't the only dogs that you will likely deal with on a through hike. If you are on a trail that has some road walking or goes through neighborhoods, road crossings, there are chances that you're in an area where folks just let their dogs run loose. I've been chased by packs of dogs before and also just one here or there so you never know what you're gonna get but this is a real threat because if you just google hacker bitten by dog you'll see there are different blogs and videos where multiple people on different trails have had the experience of a dog attacking them while they're just trying to pass through and backpack what I have found works for me is speaking to the dog in a firm voice and just saying no um, sometimes that alone will work. I like to stay facing the dog. I mean, obviously you don't want to like stare it down and make a whole lot of eye contact, but I've found that if I end up passing the dog and it's behind me, they'll get a little brave and try to run up and nip your legs. So I stay oriented towards them. I use my trekking pole or I've used an umbrella just to kind of point, you know, and, and keep as a buffer between me and the dog and they seem to respect having something like a trekking pole or a stick or I've even used an umbrella and like popped it open before because that kind of intimidated the dog to back away and then you just try to walk slowly I mean with still the intention of getting out of there uh, but try to be calm and not make too many jerky movements and I certainly do not think that running is going to help you at all because you're not going to win that race. And I hope that I never have to use it, but this is one of the reasons that I carry pepper spray in my hip belt pocket. So if I had to have it, then it's an option. Keep in mind that if you come across a dog that is being aggressive to you on a random road walk, unfortunately it is the owner's fault, not the dog's fault. So I try to be more understanding of the situation and not take it out on the dog while still protecting myself. Also keep in mind, there is a chance for running into dogs in the woods. I have come across a pack of hunt dogs more than once. Most of the time from what I've encountered, these dogs are sweet and they, you know, are hoping that you've got some treats for them or something or some pets or the opposite. They are so driven at what they're doing that they aren't even worried about you. But the only time that it was truly an issue for me was when I had Fancy May with me. And it's not that the 
dogs we encountered were being aggressive, but Fancy wants to be the only dog in the world and she absolutely hates other dogs. So having them come up to her was terrifying because, you know, she was definitely showing aggression. And if I had been the only one there at the time, I feel like I would have been in quite a pickle, which this all kind of brings me to another point that I feel like it's important to make. Having a dog with you on the trail in the situations of running into livestock or um, dogs that are being aggressive, it can escalate and make things worse because you may or may not know how your dog is going to respond or how the animals that see your dog are going to feel about your dog and it may be worse than just how they feel about you. So think long and hard about taking your dog on a trail where you know you might encounter some of these situations because it could make things much more dangerous for you and your pup. And as a side note, I want to say that there are some resources you can use to try to assess how much risk you're going to have with livestock and or dogs on a specific trail or even a certain section of that trail. So if you use the Far Out app for navigation, a lot of times people will comment on waypoints where there is an aggressive dog, you know, hey, I had an issue with a dog at a pink house at mile 712.3 or whatever. So that at least helps you keep an eye out, um, be prepared, you know, already have your trekking pole and pepper spray if you need to or whatever so that it's not something that's going to blindside you. Also, people will typically share any of these experiences that they have on Facebook groups for whatever particular trail. There's a Facebook group for like every trail out there. So um, a lot of times there will be some kind of note made during that season. So if you just keep a watch out in both of those places, it'll give you a heads up. Well, all right, y'all, that is all I have for you today. If you've got any other tips that have helped you out in situations with livestock or dogs while you're backpacking, please feel free to share that below because I'm just one person with a limited experience and I'm always happy to learn from other folks. Thank y'all so much for watching. If you found today's video useful, don't forget to share with a friend and we will see y'all in Florida because I'm about to go on a little trip. <laughs>